Rome, the gladiators went into the arena with these words on their lips. Let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. Today, all of you young athletes are in the arena. Many of you will win, but even more important, I know you will be brave and bring credit to your parents and to your country. Let us begin the Olympics. Special Olympics athletes take pride in their accomplishments and enjoy the interaction with Special Olympics volunteers. Special Olympics volunteers constitute more than a million people worldwide. This vast network of support for Special Olympics athletes is the result of a unique and innovative history. Special Olympics was little more than an idea in June of 1963. Eunice Kennedy Shriver, Sister of President John Kennedy began a summer day camp in her backyard for people with intellectual disabilities. Her goal was to provide sports opportunities for persons who may have never dribbled a basketball, swam the length of a pool, or sprinted around a track. In order to develop a national program, Mrs. Shriver enlisted the help of Dr. William Freeberg of Southern Illinois University. Dr. Freeberg had created a successful camping program for people with disabilities. Dr. Freeberg conducted workshops for recreation directors from all over the country, including those from the Chicago Park District. With time, hundreds of organizations established day camps with financing from the Joseph P. Kennedy Jr. Foundation. With the support of Mrs. Shriver and the Kennedy Foundation, a great idea became a reality in 1968. At that time, the Chicago Park District and the City of Chicago supported the efforts of Park District employee Anne McGlone Burke in organizing the first International Special Olympics Games at Soldier Field. 1,000 athletes from the U.S. and Canada competed in track and field and aquatics. Much has happened since that hot summer day in Chicago. By January 1970, Special Olympics programs had been created in all 50 states, the District of Columbia, and Canada. Soon after, the Special Olympics movement grew beyond North American borders as France held its first Special Olympics Games. Today, over two and a quarter million athletes train and compete in more than 150 countries, and these numbers are growing every year. As Special Olympics has grown since its birth in 1968, its organizational structure has expanded to accommodate this growth. Special Olympics Incorporated, headquartered in Washington, D.C., oversees all national programs worldwide. National programs oversee state and local programs. Illinois is divided into a number of geographical areas. Each area manages the training and competition programs for athletes at the grassroots level. The mission of Special Olympics is to provide year-round sports training and athletic competition in a variety of Olympic-type sports for children and adults with intellectual disabilities, giving them the continuing opportunities to develop physical fitness, demonstrate courage, experience joy, and participate in the sharing of gifts, skills, and friendship with their families, other Special Olympics athletes, and the community. Special Olympics is founded on the belief that people with intellectual disabilities can, with proper instruction and encouragement, learn, enjoy, and benefit from participation in individual and team sports adapted as necessary to meet the needs of those with special mental and physical limitations. 
Special Olympics believes that consistent training is essential to the development of sports skills, and that competition with those of equal abilities is the most appropriate means of testing these skills, measuring progress, and providing incentives for personal growth. Special Olympics believes that through sports training and competition, people with intellectual disabilities benefit physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually. Families are strengthened, and the community at large, both through participation and observation, is united in understanding people with intellectual disabilities in an environment of equality, respect, and acceptance. Special Olympics is open to individuals eight years old or older who have been identified as having some form of intellectual disability. Special Olympics is not just for children, a commonly held belief. Adults with intellectual disabilities benefit from Special Olympics as much as children do. Another common myth is that Special Olympics is for people with physical disabilities. Although a small percentage of athletes have a physical disability in addition to an intellectual disability, Special Olympics was developed specifically for individuals with intellectual disabilities. Persons diagnosed with an intellectual disability have both a slower rate of learning and a limited capacity to learn. They may also have difficulties managing the ordinary activities of daily living, understanding the behavior of others, and determining their own appropriate social responses. Persons eligible to participate in Special Olympics have the opportunity to train and compete in 30 official summer and winter sports and a half dozen demonstration sports. Choices range from basketball and gymnastics to speed and figure skating. The choice of sports available is continually growing. All athletes must train for at least eight weeks prior to competing in that sport. This usually consists of several hours of practice each week. Training has several valuable benefits for the athlete. It develops physical fitness and conditioning, increases sports skill level and competition skills, and establishes self-confidence and social skills. Trained volunteer coaches are critical to the success of the Special Olympics programs. Beyond teaching athletes necessary sports skills, they are also role models and character builders. Coaches give Special Olympic athletes the most immediate awareness of their own worth, ability, courage, and capacity to grow and improve. A Special Olympics coaches education system has been set up to accommodate both coaches without a sports background as well as those who do have a sports background. After serious training, Special Olympics athletes first compete on the local level. Athletes may advance to regional or statewide competition. Every two years, athletes are chosen to represent Illinois at the International World Summer Games or Winter Games. In the years between World Games, National Games or National Invitational Tournaments are offered. Special Olympics has a spectrum of choices in sports participation. Programs have been designed to serve the various abilities of athletes ranging from those with mild disabilities to those with severe and profound disabilities. The Motor Activities Training Program, or MAP, was created for those with severe disabilities. Events are non-competitive and are based on basic locomotor skills. Individual skills competition is provided in each of the team sports and is for athletes who do not possess the skills needed to participate on a team or do not have a team in their area to play with. Special Olympics Illinois offers 19 individual and team sports with competition held year-round. To promote inclusion of Special Olympics athletes into school settings and in the community, Special Olympics offers a unified sports program. Special Olympics athletes are combined with members of the community without intellectual disabilities and compete against other unified teams. The more an athlete competes, the more polished their sports and competition skills become and their confidence grows. Coaches can increase competition opportunities by setting up small games during training sessions or arranging for practice meets. All Special Olympics competitions follow the official rules of the sport propagated by the national governing body of each particular sport. 
Modifications to these rules are found in the official Special Olympics sports rule books and in the Special Olympics Illinois rules interpretations. All coaches are expected to learn these rules. In order to assure that there is an opportunity for every athlete to finish first in a given event, a process called divisioning is implemented at all competitions. Each athlete or team is placed in divisions with three to eight athletes or teams of approximately equal ability levels. This is determined by previous performance as well as gender and age when appropriate. The previous times or scores of all athletes or teams within a division must be within 10 to 20 percent of each other. Athletes are expected to make an honest effort in all preliminary competitions to ensure they place in a division that accurately reflects their abilities. Through this process, every athlete or team has a chance to win at any given sport, which makes for good, close competition. Special Olympics does not advocate winning at any cost. In Special Olympics, doing your best and reaching your potential is what's important. Special Olympics has made strides to involve athletes in all aspects of the organization through the Athlete Leadership Program, or ALPS. In ALPS, athletes can become coaches, officials, committee members, members of the Board of Directors, or members of the Athlete Congress. Athletes can also become global messengers for Special Olympics. These athletes go through a specialized training program where they learn to write speeches and acquire basic presentation strategies. No one can spread the message of Special Olympics more eloquently than the individuals who benefit most from the programs. The National Games is another great experience that Special Olympics offers us as athletes. The Illinois team will reach for the gold with pride. Yeah. Athletes' self-esteem, self-confidence, and pride grow the more they train and compete. They are encouraged to make their own decisions in choosing a sport. They have an opportunity to travel and learn about other places and cultures. Athletes often grow closer to their family because of common activities and interests. The family's awareness of the abilities of their child may lead to greater pride in their child and better understanding of their child's mental disability. It's given us a, an opportunity to realize that really the only limitations in life are the ones you're willing to accept and that the power to do and be anything is inside them. And to see that come out is just very uplifting because as long as life exists, the possibilities are endless. And they've really personified that and it's just been a very positive experience for the entire family. An athlete's relationship to the community often improves as volunteers and spectators grow in acceptance of the differences among people. I had to yet show myself that I can accomplish any type of goal, whatever the goal was, I had to prove that to myself. Just be yourself and not try to be somebody else, just be you. And if you try to be you, and then that's what people are gonna look at, not so much of you trying to be somebody else. For Special Olympics to be successful in creating the sports opportunities from which athletes benefit, it depends on a vast network of volunteers. In fact, Special Olympics would not exist today and could not have been created without the time, energy, dedication, and commitment of its volunteers. In Illinois alone, more than 25,000 volunteers drive the programs at the state and local levels. As a nonprofit organization, volunteers are the backbone of Special Olympics. A great variety of opportunities are open to Special Olympics volunteers. Individuals can volunteer their time through coaching, fundraising, public relations, or administrative help, or simply as a driver, timer, scorer, or food service worker for a given event. Regardless of what volunteer role chosen, measures are taken to ensure the safety and well-being of all the athletes and to retain the integrity of the Special Olympics program. Each volunteer is required to register prior to participation in a Special Olympics program. Special Olympics reserves the right to investigate the background of each applicant. State programs must also comply with any state or local laws and regulations related to volunteers. 
Special Olympics has a volunteer code of ethics that individuals must be willing to follow. They must fulfill the responsibility of their assignment, set a good example for the athlete, demonstrate good sportsmanship and cooperation, be continually vigilant and aware of the safety of the athlete, and be loyal to their commitment to Special Olympics. As a volunteer, it is necessary to show an understanding of intellectual disabilities. It's important to understand that an individual with a disability is a person first, and that the disability is only a part of that person. These kids, you know, they have limitations, but you never, you can never tell it from the exuberance that they display. They, they put so much into it, and they're just so excited about the, the opportunity to, to play in, in, in the Olympics that there's just nothing that I've experienced in my lifetime like this. The greatest reward for most volunteers is seeing the spirit of Special Olympics reflected on the faces of the athletes. Skill, courage, sharing, joy. This is the spirit of Special Olympics, the human spirit in its purest form. This spirit flows from values that transcend all boundaries of geography, nationality, political philosophy, gender, age, race, and religion. Many volunteers would argue that the athletes give them more than they give the athletes. Special Olympics athletes will inspire you. Let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt.